Welcome to One More Thing. I'm Pastor Brett Watson. I'm here with Pastor Troy, the good doctor, do say. <laughs> um, and we're talking about uh, this Sunday's, this past Sunday's uh, sermon, the last of the Connection series. Yes. And you chose the resurrection to talk about. Resurrection as connection. Got a little controversial. A little bit. A little for, bit. for some. For some. Um, talking about all the history. I, I told you this in staff and people are going to think I just, this is what Brett says, but it really was, uh, it really was one of the best, um, teachings from the pulpit Mm -hmm. that I've, that I've heard on the resurrection. It was, it just had the right amount. In my opinion, it had the right amount of, you know, historical context for the concept and, and the, um, and then the the right infusion of of hope and um and power mm-hmm. the power of the resurrection um that is uh falls more in line with what Roar would say is a, the the pattern the yeah. patterns of reality right? That's right so kudos thanks man it was really good really yeah. good we tried to uh you know I tried to do my best to to frame it within you know a very inclusive spectrum of belief if i can use mm-hmm. that word very loosely so whether you believe in a literal physical resurrection or if you are more on the more the liberal side of theology where you believe more of its uh, metaphorical or symbolic mm-hmm. resurrection yeah regardless of what happens to the corpse of jesus there is there is there's this fundamental truth that resurrection is something that was not a one-time historical event. It is something that, like you said, like Rohr would say, it's a pattern that we see consistently true and played out, uh, even just in nature. You yeah. Know, in the, in in the winter, which is coming, things die, and they come back to life in the spring, anew. And that pattern is something that. You know, the argument was it can't just be for our flowers and plants. It has to be the same sort of transformational power that is available to me within me to die to something, but to come up from, because resurrection is a geological term. Um, re meaning to again and surrect means to sort of come up, right? And so, so I'm coming up again as something not better, but new. And I think that's the promise of the resurrection is um, it, it's something wholly different. And world mythology is just replete with this. Yes. I mean, it, it's all over the place. You mentioned some of the ones that were uh, you know, historically contextual for that time. Right. When Christianity uh, delivered its version of the of the resurrection story. But uh, um, I mean, it's, you can go way back oh, yeah. to the, the oldest of myths, yeah. Osiris. Um, That's right. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Gilgamesh even yeah. has a kind of resurrection experience. And That's right. So, yeah, it's old stuff. Um, I, I really liked the way that you kind of transitioned uh, from that information that, that might, might shake some paradigms, you know. Right what's he saying about the resurrection? Like it didn't happen or something like what he sounds like he's going in a direction. I, it's making me uncomfortable, you know, <laughs> That's right. uh, to, to say, no, no, here, look, how dare we limit yeah. the power of God and the resurrection to simple resuscitation. Yeah. You know, you didn't threaten right. my words, but yeah, yeah. that's basically what you were getting at. Yeah. It's gotta be more than that. Right. That's right. And, uh, and so, yeah, you, that's that's where you went with it. And I, I felt like, you know, look, this is great because the if you are if you believe in the physical resurrection, as I do, yeah, I, I do believe that he. I think that the myths um, were actualized, if you will, right? You right. know, in in uh, in Jesus of Nazareth. But it doesn't matter. That's right. I wasn't there. That's I right. can't prove it. And how does it change my life? Yep. You know? 
so many things like that that the church clings to dogmatically that has no real impact on (laughs) your transformation into, you know, Christ likeness. That's right. That's right. uh, If you believe it. So that's right. It was a great emphasis on that and, um, and re empowers the whole concept. In fact, it kind of like, it doesn't really re empower it as much as it exposes the real power of it. Right. Yeah, uh, it's it's again it's breaking people out of this this liminal space of I believe something, therefore I'm good, right? So long as I believe it, and I intellectually ascend to acceptance of this particular belief X, then all of this stuff the transaction is done. That's it. My transaction yeah. is done. So that's why I gave you know we, we read that text from Paul, and it's a very very powerful text where he says, I want to experience the resurrection. Well, the only, you got to read David Hume. The only way I experience things is through the five senses of my existence itself. Mm -hmm. And so when Paul says, I want to experience the resurrection, he's not talking about, oh, when I die, I hope I'm resurrected. No, he's saying that's available to me now. Mm -hmm. That's available to me at this moment. And that's why I gave people just, there's a lot more ways I could have went, but I, for time's sake, I said, look, there are three, here are three examples of how you can experience the resurrection power of Christ in your life now and not keep it limited to some historical event that may or may not have happened. But dude, it is a symbol of transformation that love wins over evil. Life wins over death, right? That's who cares about what happened to a body so long as I'm able to experience that same type of resurrection power in my life now? Then I see we went into, you know, Marcus Borg's understanding is that, you know, which I think is a very, very, like, apropos way to understand it. You can't kill love. You can't kill it. It's going to come back. It's going to resurrect Maybe not even in Jesus. Like, I'm with you. I believe there was a physical resurrection. But even if there wasn't, let's say science proves it somewhere. Who cares? I don't care. It's the resurrection of Jesus happens over and over and over again when you can't kill love, when love triumphs, right? And then, of course, we went to, to Father Rohr's understanding of the resurrection is an invitation for participation, in this ongoing process God has unfolding in reality is that I get to play a part. I get to play a part in resurrecting my life in resurrecting other people's lives. When I lean into, you know, these teachings of what Jesus told me to do, I become a new person when I live it, not just believe it. And so that was the whole point, man, is to, to simply say, Let's sort of take the seatbelt off of, of Jesus's body, right? And let it be what it was intended to be, something far beyond the mythological or the literal or however you understand the resurrection. And I get it. Like Easter comes and we celebrate it and it's our biggest attended service. But I'm going, we should be res- resurrection people, Easter people, every day of the year, not just on the spring solstice, you know? Yeah. No, I like that too. Uh, the, the first pastor that I, that I worked under, uh, used to say all the time, he would say, guys, every Sunday is Easter Sunday, not just Easter Sunday. Yeah. But I like that. He said, this is every day. Oh yeah. Because the reality is that a man never steps in the same river twice. That's right. You are not the same person that you were a moment ago. That's right. (laughs) Right? right. (laughs) Even biologically, you're not the same. So there's resurrection taking place all the time. That's it. All the time. And and so what do you think happens when a person wraps their mind around that? What do you think? What what kind of transformation occurs when you think about reality that way? Well, that's the thing is when you really think about that word resurrection, it gives this very happy, hopeful sentiment. And I go, yeah, it should. Like that should be the sure. result. But there's always something prior to the result, and that is the death of something. Mm-hmm. 
I said it Sunday. In order for Jesus to be so gloriously resurrected, he had to be... Horribly killed. Horribly <laughs> killed. Yeah. So, yeah, while we're Easter people, we live in that reality. We're also living in the reality is that there are things in my life that should die. There are habits and hurts and regrets and hangups and fucking and mistakes I've made that have to die, bro. And that's why Paul says, I forget the past because it's old and I stretch forward to what's new because that is the future. Dude, I got to let go of the past. You got to let go of the past. And we press forward with this resurrection power. And that is the power that's within us. When I'm able to die to this thing that I regret, when I'm able to die to this thing that I hate in my life, you know, and God brings me back something new. And I said, I do. There be people who, who see the new you, but reject it. Mm -hmm. And that's all right. That's part of the tribulation that is inherent in my transformation. And I don't know why I'm all emotional, dude, but I'm just really believe this because I look at our community and so many people in our community are hurting, like they're going through crap. And you just got to look and go, that's part of the resurrection process. You know, our good friend Randy lost his business, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what, dude? Something has to die for something new to come about. Stay hopeful. We have friends who are, whose marriage are... Their, their marriages are dying, ending. Gotta stay hopeful. Something new is gonna be birth. Mm -hmm. Death hurts. Yeah. But so does birth. And that's resurrection, man, because it's a rebirth of that. Pa it's not like you lost your passion for business or love. It just is being rebirthed into something new, something you can't imagine. And that's the hope we have, dude. Like, I get it. It's crappy going through it, dying. It's crappy even being rebirth, you know? Um, but the truth of the matter is, it's going to be okay. Stay connected to God. And what does that mean? It's, yeah, there's a mysterious connection I have with the divine. Mm, yeah. But for the most part, dude, when I need God in my life, I'm calling you. Right? And yeah. I don't mean that to sound heretical. But God has never broke open the heavens and come down on his ladder in my life. God has always showed up in the form of one of his children in my life. Whether it's you, whether it's Dr. Bauckham, Ricardo, whoever. That's how, that's how we stay connected to God. We stay connected to the community of God. And that's where the resurrection power lies, bro. Initially, it's when I'm dying to something... And I'm being rebirth, man, it sure helps to have someone in that delivery oh, room. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what I'll you know, you talked about friends going through stuff. You know, recently I said this to one of those friends and said, I just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, we're here to walk yeah. through whatever you gotta walk through with you. Yeah, man. You know. And this is so central to the Christian message, right? Yeah. But the resurrection is the hope held out in front of all that walking. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that we can always look to. And it's weird that humans do that. Yeah. We were talking earlier, right? It's a, it's so, you just don't see it anywhere else yeah. in nature. You don't, you see the resurrection in nature. You see it, you know, the, the cycle of life, death, resurrection, but what you don't see is an animal going, I need to aspire to be better than I am right now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Right? I need to have something in my life right now die. Yeah. And I need to go through that tribulation in order to become. That's right. Something new. That's awesome, man. We are amazing things, man. We are, dude. We are. We have that unique ability to see forward. Yeah to project ourselves into a future that is either hopeful or harmful. And I think that's where the connection to community and to God is, is that when I lean into that community, my future, I see as mostly hopeful. You know, it's, I had a, you know, I grew up a, 
I spent some time in the Pentecostal church, the more charismatic, spirit filled. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And I'll never forget, man. I remember one day Pastor Miller was leaving the office and I was coming in. I was like the children's minister and dude, he was dressed to the nines in his suit. He he only dressed like that on Sundays. And I remember he's got said, Pastor Miller, where are you going all dressed up, man? And he says, oh, I got to go do a funeral service here up the road in Lafayette. And I said, man, I thought you only did resurrection services. (laughs) And he goes, no, I think I want to keep this guy in the casket, man. (laughs) I think we're going to keep this guy in the casket. (laughs) Dude, and that, it's it's a funny metaphor because it was hilarious. But there are things in our life, dude, that we need to put in the casket. Yeah. You know, they're, they're they all need of us, to stay there. You need to stay there. Yeah. We don't want to resurrect that. Yeah. You know, and it's it's the, the principles that are always true. And there are things in my life that have died in this old life that I've had, you know, before my deconstruction or whatever you want to call it. And those things need to stay in the casket. Mm-hmm. These ideas I had about God need mm-hmm. to stay dead. And I just kind of, I view them like I would, you know, any any mortuary or whatever, you know. And that's easier to do when you're on the other side of it, right? And after you're raised and and you've you've dealt with the pain of dying. Yeah, that's it. And so on. So I I think it's important for people to know that, look, if you let go of something that you pretty much kind of know deep down inside is, this is not, this is just not true, you know. Um, It's not going to kill God. That's right. It's not going to kill God. You're yeah. going to be okay. In fact, you're going to be new. You're that's gonna it. Be, you're you're going to be better. So that's good stuff, man. Um, no, this was great, and um, and I'm looking forward to this Sunday. Yeah, can't wait. Rumors, tune in. What rumors are true about us that we we want to keep spreading? It's oh gonna yeah, be, I can't it's wait. It's going to be fascinating. It's going to be great. Thanks, bro. Thanks.